We're now going to talk about how we can build Pascal's triangle. So suppose we are told to write Pascal's triangle to the seventh row. Well, we always start with the zeroth row, which gives us a one. The first row is two ones. The second row depends on the first row. We put ones on the outside, and then we combine these to get two. The third row, ones on the outside, and then these combine to give a three, and these combine to give a three. Then we go one, four, six, four, one. We now have the fourth row. Five is one, five, ten, ten, five, one. The sixth row is one, six, fifteen. 20, 15, 6, 1. If you remember from the previous video, we always get the same things when we do this. So if you have it down to a certain row, then you can just build from there. And the seventh row, this is the one we care about. 1, 7, 21, 35, 35, 21, 7, 1. And we have now found, written this out to the seventh row. Well, now that we have it to the seventh row, what if I asked a new question? Now let's go right to the tenth row. Well, there's no reason to keep, to start over. So let's just build from the seventh row. 1, 8, 28, 56, 70, 56, 28, 8, and 1. The 9 is 1, 9, 36. That's 14, 84, 126, 126, 84, 36, 9, and 1. And the 10th row is 1, 10, 45. That's a 10, 90 is 120. 10, 90 is 210. 126 plus 126 is 252. Then 210 again, 120, 45, 10, and 1. So again, we have found the row that we were asked to do. And so here's where Pascal's triangle is nice, as it gives you a very systematic way of creating the coefficients that you need. The downside is that you always have to do every step up to the row that you need. But that's how we can write the rows of Pascal's triangle.